There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and visible chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos on the electrochemistry chapter. In this video, we're going to cover this question. And what I'll do is I'll read the actual question, go through how much marks they're worth, and then I'll give you about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, try to attempt the question, and when you're ready, press play and I'll walk you through the actual answer. So I'll read the question now. It says, an electrochemical cell is constructed using two half cells. One half cell consists of an inert platinum electrode and a solution of iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. The other half cell consists of a lead electrode and a solution of Pb2 plus. Current will flow from one electrode to the other electrode when the cell is completed using a voltmeter and a stall bridge. A. Write relevant half equations and a balanced ionic equation for the overall reaction. That's worth two marks. B. Calculate the standard potential. That's worth one mark. C. Identify the anode, cathode, metal ions and ions by labeling the following diagram. That's worth three marks. And D. Identify an appropriate electrode to use in a salt bridge. And that was worth one mark. This actual diagram is the one which comes straight from the HC exam question. I just... Um, through it, as opposed to being able to get it from the HC exam question. So this is the same one, it's exactly the same one. All right, so what I'll do, I'll give you five, also before I start, um, this, you will need this standard reduction table, which I included in descriptions of this video. So open up this browser and use it for your questions, because you need to use that to answer a couple of those questions. So pause the video, and then when you're ready, just press play. All right, so I'm back. So for this is a question, it's a bit tricky just because we don't use our normal two um, electrodes. In this case, we've got two electrodes. We have our PB, which is our lead electrode, and our platinum electrode. Because it's inert, that means you can almost ignore it. So that's not the important part. The important part is this two plus and three plus iron, which is in solution. So to do the first part, write relevant half equations and a balance ionic equation for the overall reaction. The first part we also always have to do is have to figure out which one is at the cathode, so which one gains electrons, and which one is at the anode, which one loses electrons. Electrons, not electrodes. And the way we can do that is by looking at which one's more, has looking at that reduction table and looking at which one has a higher reduction potential. So reduction potential just means likelihood of gaining electrons, likelihood of gaining electrons. And remember, cathode is where the ones are, the metal is, or whatever the solution is that gains electrons. So likelihood of gaining electrons is at our cathode, and anode is where they lose electrons. So when we look at this table, we've got uh, Fa3 plus and Fa2, and we've got lead. So you have to look at it, and we have lead here. So likelihood of lead gaining electrons is 0 0.13, or minus 0 0.13. And the likelihood of Fa3, up here, Fe3 plus going into Fa2 plus, so likelihood of Fa3 plus gaining electrons is 0 0.77. So this one's more likely to gain electrons compared to lead. So Fa3 plus is our um, is at our uh, cathode. So this is where we have Fa3 plus and our platinum, inner platinum one, and our anode will be the lead, so Pb2 plus. So if we write the relevant half equations, what we have to do is first when you have, we know anode now, we know it's going to lose electrons, so we're going to have at our anode, which is A of anode, it's going to be Pb which is a solid Pb, but that's going to lose two electrons, so it's going to become Pb2 plus ions, Pb2 plus, and it's going to lose these two electrons. And to figure out what exactly this half equation is for iron, what you can go back, you can go back on this standard reduction potential, which you get in all the exams as well, and you can just copy this part. This is what your half equation is for iron, Fa3 plus. So for the cathode, the half equation was Fa3 3 plus, which gains one electron, 
and becomes F E two plus. It's been reduced, its oxidation number has been reduced, or another way of looking at it is gain electrons. So now we've gotten the first part, we've written the relevant half equations, but we also need to be able to write the overall equation. And for the overall equation, all you have to do is you can ignore the electrons. That's two electrons here. But we need to make sure it's balanced. So here, this one's given two electrons. So this one only picks up one electron. To make sure it's balanced, make sure two electrons are given and two electrons are taken. We have to put a two in front of each of these for our overall reaction. Right, so what we do is two Fe3 plus and Pb solid goes into two Fe2 plus. And you can always write aqueous as well, because that's aqueous. And Pb2 plus. That's aqueous. So what that means is iron has taken the electrons off of lead. Iron has reduced its oxidation number here from 3 plus 2 plus by gaining those electrons. And lead has gone from 0 oxidation number to 2 plus. So it has been oxidized. It has lost these electrons. That's your overall net equation, and that gets you a point as well. So one point for writing the half equation, one point for writing the full equation. Next was calculate the standard potential. So for that part, like the other ones, we have to use this reduction potential table. And I've written these ones already down beforehand, but I'll show you where I got them from. So this is how likely they are to be reduced. Um, for our Fe, this was here, 0 0.77, positive. And for the other one, for lead, it was minus 0 0.13. Um, now this is the way we calculate standard potential. So for the one that's being reduced, which in this case is our cathode, the ones that our cathode has been reduced to Fe, all we can do is we can just grab that value straight off here and use that. So 0 0.77, don't have to change it. Whereas in the other one, so with the other half equation, we actually have oxidation occurring. This tells us reduction, so we can see here this is the gain of electrons, this is reduction, but we're not looking at reduction, we're looking at oxidation. So all you have to do is look at this value, which is the reduction value, and flip it on its head, as in flip that sign, and it becomes our oxidation number. So for the oxidation, we then add 0 0.13 to it, and then add those two together, so we get 0 0.9, 0 0.9 volts, that's our cell potential. And that gets another mark. So for C, identify the anode cathode metal ions and ions by labeling the following diagram. So now we have to label. So we have to label the anode and the cathode and the metals. So we had our anode was lead. So I'll write anode because we have to label the anode. Anode is lead. Our cathode was actually, I mean, platinum was that rod here. But that was not the important one, but we have to write platinum. But the things that make it actually happen in terms of oxidation reduction are these ions, which we have to put down here. So this is where the dot for the ions goes. So ions we have for the platinum one, we have Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions in the solution. Whereas for the lead, we have these Pb2 pluses in there. Pb2 pluses. Now we get marks, I'm guessing it's actually half mark for each of these, correct? Half mark, so half mark for this, half mark for this, one mark for that total, half mark for getting the anodes, correct? And has half mark for getting the platinum, correct? So overall that would be three out of three, if you've gotten that all correct. And then it says identify an appropriate electrolyte to use in a salt bridge, so for a salt bridge, which I didn't include here, but what would be the appropriate um, solution? So in this case, I just wrote potassium nitrate, but there are quite a few different ones you could have written, written but it says identify, also all you need to do is name it. In this case, I wrote potassium nitrate, and that's a simple mark as well. So that would have been in total of six out of six if you've done that kind of setup, and show you in where they come from. The calculation ones and the writing in the half equations all came from this dot point, so they calculate this potential E requirements using standard potential and half equations from this dot point. 
Um, identify the anode and cathode metal ions and ions. That comes from constructing the galvanic cell. So be able to construct that. And also we also have um, our salt bridge coming from there as well, from that dot point. And describe and explain galvanic cells in terms of oxidation reduction. That's also related to the C part. So the major one, the, the hardest part, was coming from this dot point. And the other ones, labeling parts, came from some of these ones. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.